Hey Savvy People, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we are going to start a new mini-series on Bash Shell scripting, where we will learn how to script some simple commands to help automate some system processes or installations. Mainly today, we'll focus on writing our very first Bash script. The thing that makes Bash scripting great is that if you have a Linux or Unix-based system, you can begin scripting practically right away without much setup at all. And yes, it does work for Mac OS as well. So let's go ahead and start a terminal because we'll need one in order to go ahead and make a script. I'll go ahead and make this a little bigger so we can see what we're typing in here. And that should be plenty big. If you're new and stopping by to watch a scripting tutorial today, make sure to go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos. So first off, we should start by talking about Bash. So what is Bash? Bash is a command processor created for Unix-based systems Mainly, it allows you to give the system specific commands through a terminal, and then it processes those commands in order to tell the system what to do. Basic bash commands include ls to list all the contents of a directory, echo to go ahead and echo out a variable or a string, touch which creates a new file, mkdir or make directory to make a new directory, and there's many more examples. All right, and to get us started, what we want to do is go ahead and find out where our Bash program is located. So we can do that simply by going and typing in which bash. As you can see here on my Ubuntu Linux operating system, it's currently located in the user bin directory. So that's where the system uses bash from. And with that being said, you can do bash scripting and follow along with this tutorial on almost any Linux or Unix based platform, including Ubuntu, Kali, Manjaro, Debian, Mint, MX Linux, Mac OS, and many, many more. This is important to know, but many Linux and Unix operating systems already include bash in the environmental path directory. So if we did echo, which echoes another command from bash, and then we put a dollar sign and we echoed out the path, now we can tell where the system looks through first through these different types of directories for specific commands that you might type into a terminal. And as you can see here, we do have user bin as one of those folders. So when we type in bash, the system knows to go ahead and search through these various different directories looking for a match for the command that we're typing in called bash. So let's just go ahead and do bash dash dash version. This will give us the current version that we're using of the GNU bash program. So as you can see here, I'm using version 5.0.3, and it's for a 64-bit Linux architecture. This is good to know because sometimes while you're scripting in Bash, you need to know what version that you have in case there's a newer version and something has been fixed or updated, but those days are pretty much long gone since Bash has been out there for quite a long time. If anything, it would be adding new functionality. So let's go ahead and get started by creating a new file. I'm first going to go ahead and clear the screen. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and go into the documents directory, just so I have a clean place to go ahead and make this script. You can create this anywhere you want on the system. It really doesn't matter. So if I go ahead and change my directory to documents, so now that I'm in the documents directory, I'm going to go ahead and type in ls. This will just show us if there's any files located in documents. As you can see, it's clear right now. The next thing I want to do is create a new file, and I'm going to do that using nano. So if you type in nano space a file name, so we're creating a new one. We're going to call it uh, script.sh. So after that, we'll be in the nano text editor, and this is where we can begin writing our program. We'll write something real simple where we can just spit out a string to our console. So we'll first have to put in a few special characters here so that we can tell the system what bash program we want to use. And as we did before, using which, we figured out that our bash is located in user bin bash. So all I'm saying here is the absolute path to my bash program that the system is using is in user bin bash. You can also put relative locations as well. I bet you if I just put in bash instead of all this in front, the directories, that it would probably still find it because as I showed you before, you could see bash, you could see that the folder user bin was located in our environmental variables. So it would look for the command bash throughout the system and use the environmental paths in order to go ahead and find 
the first instance of bash that it could. All right, after we have this line in, we'll simply enter a couple times and let's type in echo, which we've already used and you've seen. But this time we're gonna go ahead and tell it to echo something specific, a string. Hello, I'm Savvy Nick. So after that, I'm just gonna go ahead and save this file by doing control X. And it says, do I want to save the modified buffer or this file that I've just got done changing? I'm just gonna type in Y. And then it says, what do you wanna name it? Well, script.sh is the default and that's what I'm trying to create. So I'm just gonna press enter. And now if we do ls-al, so I can list all the files in the current directory and get more information about those files, I can see now that I have a script.sh file, which is great. Now we're missing one more thing in order to be able to run this script file, and that's executable permissions. So in order to make this executable, we're gonna have to run a command, and we should see this turn green once it does become executable, and some of these flags change over here. So let's go ahead, there's really two ways of doing this. If we type in ch mod, and we do plus x, that will make a file executable. So I'm just gonna type in script.sh. If you tap twice while typing it, or starting to type it, it will autofill for you if it can find something with the key sequence that you've been putting in, just for a shortcut. Now, if you press enter, and we do ls-al again, we can see that the flags have changed and the file is in green, meaning it is executable here. So that's great. There's also one more way you can do this if you type in chmod 755 and then type in your file name, so script.sh, we should really see the same exact flags here if it truly does the same exact permissions for an executable file. And let's just do ls-al to confirm. And as you can see here, both are the same. Everything got executed properly and script.sh remained in green. Finally, the last thing that we need to do is run the script. This is very easy. And if you made it this far, please hit the like button. It really does help me out. We're gonna type in dot forward slash and then script.sh. After we press enter, it will be executed. So let's go ahead and do that. And look at that. It says, hello, I'm Savvy Nick. Great job, you've successfully made your first bash script and now you can make as many as you want. You don't have to call it script.sh. You don't even necessarily have to put the .sh at the end of it. So let's go ahead a little quicker through and make one more program here with a variable this time. So I'm just gonna do nano. I'm gonna call this var script. And in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and include, like we did before, user, bin bash, start writing my program again. So echo, hey, it's Savvy Nick again. And then I am gonna actually create a variable. So how do we do this? Well, you can define any variable that you want in here, just start typing. So I'm just gonna do something like var. And then if I do an equal sign, that means var is equal to whatever you wanna put after this. So I'm gonna put another string and actually, let's go ahead and put again in here. And then we'll put these together. And then we'll go ahead and spit again right after Hey It's Savvy Nick. So all we have to do here is type echo. And then if we do the dollar sign, that will access a variable. So all this is saying is print out a variable and the variable is equal to a string that says again. So that should be it there. We'll do control X. Yes, we want to save the modified buffer. Yes, we want to overwrite the file name. And now we should see if we do lsal, we have var script. Notice it's not in green, so we must change the permission. So chmod plus x on var script. Now it's green, we can run it. And once we run it again here, you can see, hey, it's Savvy Nick again. Well, we'll stop right here since now you've learned how to go ahead and execute a bash script as well as create one and even define and use a variable, I hope you enjoyed this 
bash scripting tutorial using Ubuntu. And remember, you can use any Linux or Unix platform. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them below in the comments section. We'll work on more advanced bash scripting projects here in the coming weeks. So make sure to go ahead and subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.